All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to set up a Easy Builder plugin using C++ in Visual Studio. So the plugins, generally, we like to get people to use C Sharp, but in this example, we'll show you how to do it with C++. So make sure you have Visual Studio installed, of course. And you can get it free from a trial version from uh, Microsoft's website. Okay, and what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, create a new project. And it's going to be a C++ project. We're going to use a CLR, which means it's going to compile against the .NET runtime. And then we're going to uh, specify a location for it. And I already have a plugin location specified here. You can make your own. And of course, we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it C++ plugin example. And it has to be a class library. Okay, we're not making a, a console application or anything else. We're making a class library. Wait for the project to get set up here. There we go. Okay, now two classes are created for us because we asked for a class library, and we don't want these. We're going to delete these. So hit delete, and then say delete the actual file rather than just removing it. Now hit delete on the keyboard again, and delete it. There we go. So now I'm going to um, I'm going to create uh, references to the Easy Builder software program. So I'm going to do that by clicking reference. I'm going to click add reference here and I'm going to browse and explore my file system. So for you it would be C, C drive program files 86 and then look for easy robot ink. Look for easy builder and locate easy builder and click add and then do the same and add the easy BDLL file. Okay. Now if you're going to be doing um, any graphics or anything. We also have the awesome AForge library, which is uh, it's for doing some graphic work, but you'll see some other libraries. But we're just going to use the easy BDLL in this case here. We'll click OK. Now, as you can see by the other uh, and references that are included here, you'll see that the copy local is false. That's what we want as well. We don't want to copy the entire easy builder installation and all its stuff over with your project. So we're going to set easy b and easy builder to copy local false as well. There we go. Now let's create our first form. So we're going to go into the uh, add new item here and we're going to go to UI and create a Windows form. Now let's give it a name. We're going to call this form main. Click add. And there's our form and you can see it's using the default colors for for windows with a gray background everything it's pretty ugly but that's okay we're going to go inside of this form click on view code and here we're, you can see that it's inheriting the windows form we're going to change that we're going to change that to easy builder uc forms and the plugin master okay so now when we click back on our file you're going to see it's going to look more like a plugin, you have the help button, and you're going to have your close button, and of course your white background that Easy Builder uses. Okay, so now there's a bunch of overrides that you're going to need to use if you want to save files and save information into your project file. And to add an override in, uh, in C++, um, the one that we really want here is called uh, set configuration. Okay, and you're going to see here that it wants set configuration, it's in public, and it's going to be a void and you can see here that it's going to accept a parameter which is the plugin CF. Okay, so we're going to create this set configuration and of course it's easy builder um, and it was uh, config sub and it's the plugin and of course it's CF and it's an override and you can't forget that override. There we go. So this now is going this this will run whenever the project, whenever you load Easy Builder with a new project, Easy Builder will specify this will run this method and it's going to pass in a CF, which is if you look take a look at it, it has a bunch of stuff in here like your servos, storage, and storage is great because you can do things like add any objects into it, any values, check if it contains. So really what this is for is so that you're application can save its project settings 
or your, your plugin can save its project settings inside of an easy builder project. Okay, that way you don't have to have your own project file for your own application. It's saved inside the user's project file. All right, now to demonstrate how this, you know, we'll add some features to make this do something, let's add a button. And this button's pretty ugly, so let's change it to the flat style, which Easy Builder likes to use. And let's give it a name. We'll call this button forward. We'll make the robot move forward when you push this button. And now we're going to give this button an appropriate name. We'll call it button forward. And make it a little bigger here. And we click on it. There's our code for the button forward. So to make your robot move forward, of course, an Easy Builder you can have tons of different kinds of robots, rovers and AR drones and flying robots and humanoids and hexapods, and they're all controlled, the movements are controlled by what's called a movement panel. So your plugin doesn't need to care about how the robot moves, it just needs to know that it wants the robot to move forward. And the type of robot that is currently loaded, it will just move forward based upon whatever it needs to do. If it's a humanoid, it'll start walking forward. If it's a hexapod, it'll walk forward. If it's a flying robot, it'll drive forward. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to use Easy Builder, Easy Bee Manager, and now we're gonna take a look and we're gonna see that there's something called Easy Bees. Now the first Easy Bee of the, the array, because you can have multiple Easy Bees connected to a robot, is always the one that controls the movement. And it's an array. So we're going to use ray index zero. And now we're going to take a look inside of this class and you're going to see there's a whole bunch of stuff. Well, the one we care about is movement. So if we scroll down here and now we take a look inside of movement, we have all these different controls like make the robot move forward, left, right, adjust the speed. What we're going to do is we're going to say go forward. And there are a few overrides here for the speed, etc. but we're not going to change. We're going to use default speed. There we go. So now if we push this button, it's going to execute and tell the robot to move forward in our plugin. Now, there's other things we can do too. For example, we can add into the Easy Builder as a in the toolbox, and you'll see we have a whole bunch of really awesome user controls that you can add in here. For example, one of them is the help hover. And this is super useful. You should definitely start using this. This allows you to be able to put help information next to any of your, your buttons or your, your features so that users will be able to know what it is. So for example, in this case, we'll say this button makes the robot move forward. So if somebody were to hover their cursor over that uh, in the actual plugin, it'll pop up that little message. Now we have the robot moving forward, of course, now let's make the robot actually stop. So let's go back here, add another button, and we will change this to a flat style. We'll put the word stop, and of course we'll change its name to something more appropriate and we'll double click on it and we will add our easy builder, easy bee manager, easy bees, zero, and movement. And of course, as you can imagine, what I'm gonna do here is stop. That's it. Okay, so there's other things we can add into here. Um, you're looking at to the easy builder user controls over here. For example, if we wanted to you take advantage of any of the, uh, the controls that our software uses to make things easy, like for example, um, a port button. If somebody wanted to select a port button, we can put that there and we can change its, its style as well. We can give it a better name. Select a port. And we'll show you what this looks like in a minute. And we can also add some other things in here too for fun. Like let's add a, um, let's add a, a servo position control. Right? So this here will allow you to be able to make a servo move. And if we um, take a look at some of the events, this one has an on change event, uh, on delete event. So there's a couple of events that are custom to these controls as well. All right, so we added a couple bunch of stuff to this form. Now we want to actually run it. Well, we can compile it. Okay. And there we go. But there's no way to actually run this because if I hit F F5, you can't run a DLL file, right? So we want to load this inside of Easy Builder. The first thing we're going to want to do in Easy, in, in, to run it in Easy Builder is we have to go to our website, the Easy Builder website for Easy Robot, and go into our plugin screen here. And we actually have to create a plugin and register the plugin so that it can work. So we're going to create a new plugin. 
and this plugin will call it uh, C++ um, plugin example. Okay. Now we don't have to give it any descriptions or anything yet because we're just using this to uh, to develop with. So we're just going to click save. Okay, so we save this plugin name. Now we're going to take a look at all the plugins that I have. And as you can see here, there's it's crossed out. There's a line here showing that it's not active. These ones are all are all um, are active because they're not uh, they're public. They don't see the line crossed out. So I'm going to click on details here, and I want to download this XML file because my plugin needs to have this XML file. So there it's downloaded, and let's load this file up. Okay, and you can see here that I have a bunch of information, and this is really important. This is the plugin good. So what we want to do is we want to copy this plugin good into our clipboard, and we want to go to our hard drive, and inside of the users public, and this is the same for all Windows. It may not be in your C drive if your local drive isn't C, but you will have a pop a, a public folder, public documents, and once you run Easy Builder, it'll create this plugins folder, and this is where all the plugins reside. So we're going to create a new folder here. And we're going to paste into that GUID, and there we go. So this is the this is the directory that we want this plugin file to exist and our DLL file to exist. Okay. Now you can also see here that our DLL file name is empty. So we can we can populate this DLL file name, and let's uh, let's take a look at our plugin folder here. And let's look inside of our debug, and there's our file name that we are we've created. So let's copy this, and let's put this in here, and close that. There we go. And we'll close this program. Now, let's uh, let's go into our into our downloads folder here. And find our plugin file that we saved, and let's put it inside of here because it needs to be in here once we compile our program as well. Okay, let me put this down. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to copy this URL, this I think URL, this file path here, and we need to tell the project to compile this project and save the DLL file into that. So you're going to do that by going to your. Uh, so let's give this file name. And now let's build this again. We'll create it. Okay. So now we should be able to load up Easy Builder and when we go to projects, add, and under our plugins folder here, there's a plugin that we just created. We can click on it, and there it is. So I I added the forward, the stop, right? And I also have here some other controls I added to demonstrate. For example, select a port. This will pop up and allow you to select a port, right? So if you're doing any configuration, this one here will allow you to control servos. You can select the port for the servo, and you can slide your mouse cursor and control it. So there's a bunch of when you start using Easy Builder, you'll notice there's a bunch of user controls that we have that make things easier. So this this plugin now is saved inside of this project. So if I were to save this project, and I'll call it my test project, and then I'll clear it and click new. Now here's my test project and my history. When I click on it, there's my C++ example. It loads up the plugin that's saved with my project. So when somebody creates a project, whether it's even on the cloud or it's on, an, it's on uh, the file system, your plugin will always load. And if the user doesn't have your plugin, then it will go off and it'll download it from the website automatically, given that you've actually uploaded it to the website. Okay, so that is how you create a plugin in C++. Um, you can, you know, add multiple screens and everything, and definitely read the tutorial that's on the uh, the learn section of the website because it's going to tell you exactly how to do things like save save your information inside of the project file or move servos, and you know, don't use the GUI thread for any lengthy tasks. Just general common sense stuff. As a C++ programmer, you should already be familiar with all that anyway. Okay, so check out the website, and uh, I'll see your plugin soon.